electromagnetic fields have ah been argued to work microwaves with electromagnetic fields have been argued to work entirely by heating in terms of health effects and what my talk says is that that's incorrect that they produce health effects via vgcc and i'll explain what that is in a minute activation okay so and this is a little bit about my background i got my bachelor's degree at johns hopkins i actually got it in physics i uh, took a lot of chemistry and biology classes got a phd in biochemistry and genetics from caltech uh, i'm professor emeritus of biochemistry and basic medical sciences at washington state university i've received seven international honors for my work in environmental medicine and these are all on chemical work not on electrical work uh, i published a paper last year on how electromagnetic fields uh, which are usually abbreviated EMFs, impact the cells of our bodies. And uh, that's going to be uh, pretty central to what I'm talking about there. This paper uh, was just honored for inclusion as a global uh, medical discovery paper. So that means it's, according to this site, one of the top medical publications of 2013. Um, I, I have given already four professional talks on this topic, and by the end of next month, I what was the journal that was published? Did you say it was the Journal of Cellular and Molecular Medicine? Thank you. And I've got the citation on one of these slides. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, U.S. and international uh, safety standards for microwave radiation uh, don't di directly apply to devices that fall within the control of the state of Oregon, but because they have often been used to claim safety for state-controlled devices. They're relevant to the discussion here. And uh, so these safety standards are entirely based, as I said before, on the assumption that the only thing that's important, at least, that microwave EMFs can do is to heat things, like heating foods in, in, in your microwave oven. And therefore, um, uh, they assume that if heating is minimal, you don't have to worry about health effects. And that's the basic, uh, that is the basic assumption behind all these uh, safety standards. Uh, in fact, there's no basis for that. And the reason that we know that is, first of all, there are some 20,000 papers in the scientific literature showing biological effects where there should be none according to the safety standards. Okay, so there's a huge literature reporting all kinds of changes um, that shouldn't exist according to the safety standards. Secondly, it's been known for over 30 years that pulse fields are more biologically active than non-pulse fields even when they don't produce any more heating or they even produce less heating than the non-pulse fields and so we know from that that again heating is not the crucial is not the crucial thing and then now we know what the actual main mechanism is which is uh what 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 that paper was about um now let me just say there's a lot of complexities to this thing don't worry about the complexities uh what i'm trying to do is give you a feeling for how all this stuff kind of fits together okay um what my paper showed and let me just say this was entirely other people's data that was kind of hiding in the literature okay is that there were 24 studies which showed that um that electromagnetic fields uh produce biological responses through the activation of what are called voltage-gated calcium channels, VGCCs, okay? And the reason that we know that is because if you use a calcium channel blocker, which is a drug that's specific to block these channels, it blocks the effects. And so in 24 studies, we know that, uh, that this is the way the biological response was produced. Now these are not all just on microwaves. There are a number of different kinds of EMF fields that were involved. And so uh, this seems to be a very broad uh, kind of mechanism. They were all non-ionizing radiation. They're all non-ionizing radiation, that's correct. And they're all uh, low energy photons in these. And, uh, and so uh, Okay, so, so what happens then is when you have these channels, so you have these channels, they're in the plasma membrane of the cells. And when they get activated, they open up and calcium flows into the cell. 
and it's the excess calcium in the cell, the intracellular calcium, that is responsible for most, if not all, of the biological responses. Okay, so we have a pathway then that produces this big increase in intracellular calcium. And a lot of the effects we know from increased intracellular calcium go through uh, activation of these two enzymes. These are nitric oxide synthases that are calcium dependent. Okay, so they have very low activity unless you've got a lot of calcium in the cell. And when the calcium goes into the cell, you get a big elevation of nitric oxide. Okay, now um, nitric oxide it turns out can work along two different pathways in the body and again I apologize for the complexities but basically this is the pathway that is the normal physiological pathway of action of nitric oxide so this is the way when nitric oxide is doing good things in the body this is the way it works it works through this uh, the signaling pathway okay and this is the way in which nitric oxide works in diseases and so it, it combines with this guy to form peroxynitrite, uh, which is a potent oxidant, produces oxidative stress, and produces all kinds of, of changes in the body, which, can, which are involved in various kinds of diseases. Okay? So both of these are relevant. Now, it turns out, and this is going to be sort of the simple take-home lesson of my talk, is that this pathway over here is the way in which uh, therapeutic effects of microwaves works and there are therapeutic effects of microwaves and they occur under certain specific conditions and uh, and it works along this pathway uh, and what I'm going to say is this pathway is involved in most but not not quite all of the pathophysiological effects the the damaging effects okay and so question yeah so is the bifurcation due solely to the presence or a, a certain level of the superoxide? Um, it's due to that and also the level of, of uh, I mean, it, as most of these things is very complex. But yes, basically, it depends on superoxide and it depends also on how much nitric oxide you have. Because basically, you have to have a lot of nitric oxide and a lot of superoxide, both. Okay. And... Uh, and uh, I mean, I could spend. I could spend we're talking like multiple cells. All your right, question, good enough. Let you go. Yeah, go. right. You it, have it, a neuroscientist. It's, it's, there, it's so. actually very complex, but uh, um, and it's it, you know this is something I've been studying for the last 15 years, and uh, so I probably know more than I should. Okay. Um, now, what I have in this slide is a series of well-documented effects by microwave EMF exposures that can be understood as being caused by the mechanism shown on the previous slide, okay? So these are all extremely well documented uh, uh, changes with one, with one exception I'll mention in a minute. Um, and uh, so we know that these things occur and, uh, and they can all be explained by that previous slide, okay? So um, you have oxidative stress, which we've already talked about. You have breaks in both single strand and double strand DNA, uh, you get cancer and those involve the breaks in the DNA but also certain other things. Um, and so uh, you get male and, and female infertility and let me just say male infertility has been studied a lot more than female infertility. It's a whole lot easier to study uh, but there's reason to think that both occur. Um, you have a breakdown of the blood brain barrier and what that does is uh, when you get a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, it makes the brain more susceptible to both toxic chemicals and also infectious agents. And so that's obviously important. You have a loss of melatonin, which is a hormone that controls sleep. And consequently, you get sleep di disruption. Uh, and then you have the therapeutic effects. And so all of these can be explained by that pathway that we just talked about. Um, there are other effects that occur. There are many changes in brain function that have been reported. Okay. These, are, these are very diverse. Can I ask uh, a question at this yeah. point? To what extent are these things dose dependent? And by dose in this case, it means the intensity, I assume the intensity of yeah. and the and therefore the distance doses. from the source and a variety of... Well, they're, they're, they're all dose dependent. Um, the you know, these all occur within current safety standards, okay? 
So what that tells you is that the safety standards are inadequate in terms of all of these things. And I'm not saying that industry won't, uh, won't contest the reality of these things, but that's what the literature says, okay? And, uh, and so, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I've gone through a lot of this literature carefully and some of it not so carefully. But, uh, you know, these things are all, all been uh, re reported over and over and over again. Um, so, uh, by multiple groups and so forth. So, uh, so uh, anyway, th there are changes in brain function. We really don't understand what the significance of that is, biological significance yet. I mean, uh, and, uh, but there are a lot of these VGCCs in the brain. And they're very important in the brain, so it's not surprising that you see changes in brain function. Uh, there are also changes in, in electrical control of the heart, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And those include tachycardia, rapid heartbeat, arrhythmia, and arrhythmia can lead to sudden cardiac death. So this is a uh, significant issue that one might be concerned about. Um, there's uh, there, okay, so. Um, so, in general, then, we have multiple studies <coughs> showing that each of these responses have been reported to be produced by microwave radiation exposures of various sorts. Um, there may be arguments about how strong the evidence is, and I'm sure there will be, uh, but there should be no question there is substantial evidence. Um, none of these can be explained by heat. Okay. Uh, and they can all be explained by this VGCC activation. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about autism, um, and uh, I'm working on a paper on autism. Uh, and there are a number of researchers who have argued uh, that autism, that the autism epidemic, and I'm talking specifically about the epidemic, um, uh, may be caused uh, primarily by uh, microwave EMFs. And the main argument for that is that there's a, a tremendous parallelism between this huge increase in autism and the increase in, uh, in EMF exposures that we've had over the last 35 years. And, but there are also some other types of evidence, and I'm just going to have time to share one of those types of evidence, okay? So one of the predictions of this, if this is true, and that's the question. If, if, if this is largely caused by uh, microwave EMF exposures, one of the predictions is that autism should be caused by excessive activity of the VGCCs, right? If, if, if obviously, if, and, uh, and it turns out we know that that's true, okay? And the reason we know this is true is because there's a mutation in the main uh, VGCC in the brain, it's, it's got this kind of designation. You don't need to worry about that. Um, and it, it, it causes what's called Timothy syndrome. Uh, this is a rare mutation in that gene that makes it hyperactive. So it makes it hyperactive, and it causes Timothy syndrome. And the symptoms of Timothy syndrome are autism and, in fact, the whole autism spectrum and also cardiac changes that we talked about before, tachycardia, arrhythmia, sudden cardiac death. It causes both of them. And in fact, these people with Timothy syndrome don't live very long. They typically die age four, five, six, seven. Uh, so the oldest one lived to be 13, I think. Um, so they don't, and they, and they die of, of uh, sudden cardiac death, okay? So, uh, okay, so, uh, and, and in fact, you can take this mutant gene, it's actually derivative of the gene, and put it into the mouse. And when you do that, you get classic autism symptoms in the mouse, okay? So there's no question that this thing is causing autism. Now, there's a whole bunch of other types of evidence which argue that the autism epidemic uh, may be caused by uh, microwave EMS, and we don't have time to talk about those. In summary, these things are all things that could not possibly occur if the current safety standards are correct. They're all very serious health issues. We can su substantially improve the safety of many of these <coughs> devices that are putting out these fields uh, relatively easily, I think. Uh, but I do have serious concerns about the specifics, which I think many people are concerned about, Wi-Fi in the schools and so-called smart meters, and also baby monitors, which are currently very poorly designed. Uh, those, I think, really need serious, uh, serious uh, changes.
So you have a difficult challenge, and I want to thank you for, for, for uh, working on this. Thank you very much.